Anyway, uh, we are live from the quarantine, guys, and it is Wednesday. We got a speed strength day. We're going to be doing our mobility, and we also have a three minute push up test. So, if you feel like your push up um, situation is close to what you've been doing in the dojo, fantastic. Uh, keep track of, uh, of um, how many push ups you're doing. Um, you can text me, let me know. Um, how many push-ups you did, I can update the board or uh, you know, let, you, let you know how you came in. Um, if uh, you don't feel like it's comparable to what you were doing in the dojo before, just use this as a three-minute circuit for doing push-ups because we, um, we can always improve our push-up game, yeah? So, uh, story of the day. Um, uh, this, this story is uh, um, kind of one of my, not one of my favorite stories, but I, I I find it applicable in so many different ways. And um, I'm gonna give a, an abbreviated version of this story uh, and then kind of talk about how I found it applicable. But um, there's these two friends and uh, they're um, gonna, they decided to take a, a hike through the woods, but they wanted to race it. So they decided to run through the woods, get from one point to another point and see who wins. So one of the friends, let's call that friend Josh. That friend is a little bit maybe on the competitive side and is pretty fast. And then uh, his friend Bootsy, um, who might not be as competitive, but is still pretty fast, all right? And Josh wants to win. He just wants to win. He doesn't care. So they, they take off, and Josh is in the lead. Josh gets a rock in his shoe, and he decides to keep going, keep going. And that rock is slowing him down, slowing him down. And he decides to not stop, because if he stops, he feels like his friend's going to beat him. And... Um, and so he keeps going, he keeps going until his foot becomes in so much in pain and bloodied that his friend definitely beats him, wins at the end. And if he would have just stopped for that moment and taken that rock out of his shoe when it initially hurt, he could have possibly won that. And I, I've been thinking a lot about this because I've been thinking about my situation here at the dojo, especially like when we've been doing these, um, these uh, Zoom um, or YouTube uh, workouts. And this is so silly, but there was this mat behind me, and it's the only dojo, it's the only mat in the dojo that is a quarter inch thicker than all the other mats on the floor. And I had originally put it back there because it was the least traveled place in the dojo. And then doing these workouts, it's, it's like kind of right at the midpoint of where I'm stepping, and I have to like be so careful in my mind that I don't step on it and twist my ankle. So I've been really, really self-absorbed for months or like how it's been years since we've been on this pandemic that that damn mat's been back there and I'm, I've been so afraid of twisting my ankle that it's consumed my brain while I've been doing the workout. I'm done with the workout. I come over here, I start processing the video, blah, blah, blah. And then I get on with my day and I completely forget to turn, to move that mat, all right? And so uh, finally the other day I was like, this is it, I'm moving this mat. And they're, they're so heavy, they're ridiculously heavy. So I move it out and I put it in. And then the next day I do my workout and my mind is so free <laughs> because I wasn't thinking about or injuring myself on this mat. And I was thinking about that as far as our work environments are concerned. And I think for like many, many weeks of us working at home, maybe we didn't have our, our situation set up properly, you know, and we, we just kept thinking, this is temporary, this is temporary. And then maybe we started to get like a little, a little place, you know, carved out for ourselves as far as our, our work environment was concerned. And maybe it's still not perfect, and maybe we can still continue to work on that so we're not distracted with the little minutiae or the, the things that keep us from being as effective as we possibly can. So anyway, I wanted, to, I wanted to share that story, and it just kept making me think about that damn rock in the shoe, you know, or twisted my ankle, or, you know, maybe we turn our desk in a way that is away from the TV, or, you know, any of those things that distract us, you know. So anyway, that's, that's my story. Um, we're going to get into our mobility flow. Hopefully you guys have your water. And let's start out with the beloved Cossack stretch. All right. So we're going to go back and forth, pushing our butt back onto our, our, our heel, just bringing that leg directly out. Let's go ahead and do that five times, three, four, five, and then we're going to do leg lifts. 
two, we're gonna do five of those. Three, four, five, nice. We're gonna switch it out to the other side, pushing back, getting that nice little wrist flexion, getting that flexion in our ankle as we push our butt back onto our heel, being gentle with, those, with the groin, five, and then lifting that leg, one, two, three, four, five. Awesome, we're gonna go right into our hip circles. So we're gonna draw a circle with our knee from our elbow out to the side, up and back and down. We're gonna keep that leg at a right angle as we draw that nice big circle with our knee that then translates to our hip. Five forward, and then let's go five back. Reversing that direction, being real nice, getting, getting all nice and warmed up in our hips. After we've done five forward and five back, we're gonna do five hydrants. Two, three, four, and five. Nice. Going the other side. Alexa, play Monday to Monday playlist. Three, four, five. Let's go ahead and reverse it. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and do those leg lifts. Three, four, five. Awesome. Let's go ahead and go into our shin boxes. So I'm going to bring this leg in front of me. Turn this way. Bring this knee to this foot, keeping our back straight if I need to. I'll put my hands behind my back to keep my back straight. And then I'm going to go into my transition so both feet are flat on the ground. And I'm coming this way, pointing in this opposite direction. Coming in and twisting. Coming in and turning. Now, I want to add that bend. So I'm just hinging from my waist, coming over with the flat back, coming back up and over. Give me that nice fold with a straight back. You should feel this on the outside of that thigh, on that, on that back glute. Give me one more on each side. Whoo, boy. <laughs> Feel this like so intensely, especially with so much sitting at the computer all day long. All right, guys, we're gonna go into our pigeon stretch, our pigeon. So we're gonna be in this high plank. We're gonna bring our knee in between our hands. We're gonna keep that back leg straight and active, all right? And then we're gonna bring this opposite hip down to that foot. So I'm trying to get those hips to level out. I'm gonna go into some deep belly breaths with this. Not shallow up in my, these are called thoracic breaths as opposed to my abdominal breaths, all right? So breathing deep. All right, let's go ahead and switch it out. Bringing that knee in between those hands that back leg, that back knee stays off the ground. I want you to keep that leg straight. And then I want you to turn that hip down into this foot that is closest to that hip. Get that nice and straight. Whoo! All right, then I'm gonna go into my frogs. So for my frog stretch, I'm gonna widen out my knees. My feet are gonna come straight off my knees, all right? So they're in a right angle. And then I'm gonna push my butt back into this position and then I'm gonna grab my knees and have it pull the earth together for five, four, three, two, one. I'm gonna rock it forward just to get some tension off of there. I'm gonna push back in, maybe widen out my knees just a little bit more if I can and squeeze the earth together with those knees for four, three, Two, one, rock it forward. Let's do one more time, guys. 
pushing back into it, maybe widening out those knees, but be gentle with those groins and squeeze for five, four, three, two, one. Let's gently walk it up. Let's come into our half kneeling position. We're gonna do our shoulder circles with one arm. So we're gonna keep that rib cage down, but we're gonna reach out far with that hand. My palm is facing the back wall. And then as it comes up, it's gonna rotate away from me. And then it's gonna rotate back to that back wall again. Now it's gonna face up to the ceiling. So I'm making these really nice rotations with that shoulder and hand as one unit. Coming back up, facing the back wall. Now my hand faces towards you. And it's turning along with my shoulder, rib cage down, reaching, 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 and down. Switch it out to the other side, rib cage down, reach. Hand towards that wall. Now it's going to face you. Hand, arm, shoulder, all rotate as one. Now my hand at the bottom is facing up towards the ceiling. And then I start at the back again, facing up at the ceiling, rotating towards the back wall, rotating towards you. Now it's at the back wall again, coming back down. Awesome. Let's go back into our quadruped position. And we're gonna do shoulder glides. So for my shoulder glides, first I'm gonna go vertically with it. So I'm gonna bring my shoulders up and together in the back. And then I'm gonna reach out of my thoracic spine. So it's coming up and then I'm reaching away. So let's do that five times with that vertical glide. Getting as extreme of motion as you can. Really, really good stretch. Four and five. All right, now we're gonna go horizontal. So I'm gonna pull my shoulders back to my hips and then I'm gonna bring my shoulders up to my ears. Back to my hips, up to my ears. So now I'm in this horizontal plane, bringing those back and forth. Five, all right. Let's go ahead and knock out some shoulder circles while we're here. Let's go forward with them and these big movements. So down to my hips, up to the ceiling to my ears and then pulling away five times. Let's take it backwards. Big circles. Five. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have our thumbs out to the up pointing up to the ceiling. I'm going to really engage my lats with this and we're going to do some neck circles. So I'm going to draw a circle with the top of my head. I'm going to be really, really gentle with my neck as I bring it in a full rotation, but I'm just drawing with the top of my neck. So I'm not coming into this extreme chin to chest or, chin or um, ear to shoulder being really, really gentle. We're gonna go five the one way. Again, keeping that torso engaged, keeping those arms engaged, and then we're gonna turn it the other way. Keeping those glutes engaged, the whole pillar of our body is strong with this. All right, let's go ahead. Bring our elbows together. We're gonna to rotate our wrists forward in these nice little circles. And then let's bring it back. All right. Let's go ahead and go into our side lying archers. My knees are stacked. My hands are on top of each other. I'm drawing that hand along that chest and then I'm gonna follow my hand with my eyes as I try to bring this shoulder down to the floor. Breathe in, breathe out, come back in. Let's do 
three on this side, and then we'll turn it to the other side. Nice. All right. Woo. Yep, feeling that. Feeling my hips today and my shoulders. Taking it to the other side, making sure those legs, those knees are stacked one on top of each other. Big breaths, drawing that arm and following it with my eyes. Yeah, and while we're here, let's go into our bretzel. So top arm, bottom leg, grabbing our top leg with our bottom arm. Try to bring that, this shoulder to the ground, all right? Trying to get the bottom leg as straight off my hips as possible. Breathe into it, <sighs> exhale. Every time you breathe, see if you can get that shoulder a little bit closer to the ground. Give me three big breaths on this side. And then let's take it over to the other side. So grabbing top arm, bottom leg, top leg, bottom arm. Ugh, get that shoulder to the ground if possible or as close to it. I'm probably a good four inches away from the ground with my shoulder. Taking big breaths in and out, in, out. Pull those legs a little bit more to get a little bit more of a stretch. One more breath and out. All right, let's go ahead and do some walk arounds to get our shoulders warmed up. So I'm gonna come into this deep, deep lunge, hands next to foot. I'm gonna walk it out into a high plank and then back in, and then I wanna rotate with it, all right? So I'm gonna step back a little bit further. Coming into that deep lunge, walking it out, high plank, but is at the sh same level as my shoulders. Coming back in and rotating. Coming out, back in, rotate. in, rotate. Okay, let's do one more on each side. All right. So guys, we have our three minute push up test. Again, if your situation to the dojo is not comparable, that's okay, let's just do this as a three minute set. Um, but if you want to keep track of your push-ups, text me later, let me know. I can compare it to the board, write your new scores on the board, all right? So I got the timer set. We're gonna go ahead and let's do a couple warm-ups to begin with. Now, um, I don't care if you're doing an elevated surface or if you're on the floor, I want us all to be on the floor right now. And so we're gonna lay on our bellies and we're gonna have our hands next to our shoulders. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze our feet together, squeeze our knees together, squeeze our glutes, we're gonna squeeze our shoulder blades together, and then we're gonna hold that for about five seconds when I say go. Okay, ready? And go. Five, four, three, two, one, and down, all right? So you should feel that tension throughout your body this is the same as if you're doing elevated, if you're doing, if you're doing strict push-ups, it doesn't matter. Your whole body should be on, your elbows should be into your body, your hands should be underneath your shoulders. Let's do that again. Ready? Everything's on and squeezing isometrically for five, four, three, two, one, and down. All right? So, if you're doing strict push-ups, same thing. My butt is about the same level as my shoulders. I never want to let my butt dip. Same thing if I'm doing elevated. I'm coming all the way to the floor and up. In order to get these to count, make sure that chest touches the floor. If you're doing it from the elevated surface, same thing. In order to make it count, make sure your chest touches and then you come up. So 
when we're doing the three minute push up test, that means that you can rest for as long as you want. You could do three push ups and then rest, maybe do five push ups and rest. It's not how many you do in a row before stopping, it's just how many you do total in three minutes, okay? So I have my chalk, I have my timer. We're getting ready to go, go to whatever surface that you need to be at. And we're starting in three, two, one, go. All right. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. Keeping track where I am. We have about two and a half minutes left. Make sure you get that rest. Make sure that every push up is beautiful. No crappy push ups, okay? No shallow push ups. As soon as I feel my form is wavering, that's when I'm stopping. and regrouping. Sometimes it's really nice to go into a, uh, a child's pose to stretch out. Haha. <sighs> -ha. All right, guys. We got about a minute, 45 seconds left. Ha. We got this. <sighs> yeah. All right. We got about a minute, 20 seconds left. Two. <sighs> Just because we're not in the dojo doesn't mean we don't test, huh? Got these nice little challenges. Woo, okay. We're at the, we've got one minute left, one minute. How many beautiful push-ups can you do? Only beautiful ones. Ooh, yeah. All right, 40 seconds. You got this. Exhale, that floor away from you. All right, we got 22 seconds left. This is a three minute that feels like an eternity. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> Making sure to keep those abs on. Two, one, woo! All right, that was that. <laughs> okay, so our next part of our circuit, after I grab some water, the next part of our circuit is going to be our speed strength because it's Wednesday, so we're doing speed strength today, and that's a nine to five. So what we're gonna do is Nine dumbbell front squats. We're gonna do eight dumbbell push presses, seven dumbbell sh shrugs, six dumbbell squat hold to front press, five dumbbell hammer curls. If you have two dumbbells, fantastic. Hopefully they're on the lighter side. Um, also, if you have a kettlebell, you can do all these exercises with a kettlebell. If your dumbbells are too heavy, just do it body weight. That is fine, okay? So as far as our warm up is concerned, we're just gonna go ahead and go through about five of each just to get the motion together and then we'll start into our circuit of it, okay? So I got these, these tens right here. So for my dumbbell front squat, I'm gonna hold it in this rack position where my, elbow, where my uh, palms are facing in, my feet are, are pointed out, they come down, make room for my hips to travel down and come up. So really squeeze those glutes at the top. 
I want you to make sure you get depth and keep your torso as upright as possible, all right? Doing five of these. All right, and then for my push press, Just coming down to here into this quarter squat and then using my legs to push up, all right? Whew. Give me five of those. The legs are the motivator and then you catch it on the bottom. So we're not so much using our shoulders as we are with our legs with that. And then I have my dumbbell shrugs. So my feet are still in this kind of narrow position, bringing my shoulders up to my ears and down. Shoulders up to ears and down. Try to get a full range of motion with this, guys. Give me five of those. I'm gonna widen out my feet, toes pointed out. I'm gonna come into my squat and then I'm gonna push my dumbbells forward. So I wanna make sure that my arms extend out fully. Now, if your two dumbbells are too heavy with this, that's okay, just grab one, because I still want you to go fast with it, all right? And I also don't want you to sit too deep into this. Stay active with that squat as you do your front press. And then my hammer curls. So feet are on the narrow side. My palms are facing in. This is a neutral grip. If you ever have elbow issues, the hammer curl is really easy on the elbow as opposed to the regular curl. So you could always use these as a substitution. We're doing these today. Give me five of those. So since this is speed strength, we want to go as fast as we can. Again, if your one dumbbell is too heavy, you can always, I'm sorry, if your two dumbbells are too heavy, just use the one, okay? So we're gonna start. We're gonna do our nine front squats to start, all right? Getting ready to go. Here we go. One, as fast as you can. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I have my push presses. Quarter squat and up, quarter squat and up. Three, four, five. Use those legs. Six, seven, eight, seven. Dumbbell shrugs. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six. Squat hold to front press. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Woo, those are hard. All right, got my hammer curls. Full extension with those arms, guys. Three, four, five. Awesome. We are going to rest for 30 seconds, and then we're gonna go back into it. We just have four sets of this nine to five, okay? But definitely get that rest so that you're able to hit that speed again. Speed is optimal with this, guys. If you need more rest than 30 seconds, take more rest, okay? But otherwise, we're gonna get right back into it. Ha! All right. We're starting again in about five seconds. Drop one of those weights if it's too heavy. All right, and we're going. Nine front squats. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Dumbbell push presses. Quarter squat, blast up, power up. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nice, seven shrugs, two, three, four, five, six, seven, dumbbell squat hold to front press, one, two, three, four, five, six, those you want to do fast, want to get those done, <laughs> and then we have our five hammer curls, three, four, five, yeah, that was our second set. We're going to be going into our third set in 30 seconds. Get that rest. 
Get that recovery. So you come back at this really strong, guys. Woo! All right. Woo, getting that rest. We've got about 10 seconds left. I'm feeling it, especially after that push-up test. All right, front squats, nine of those. Fast as you can, one, blast out of it, two, really squeeze those glutes, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, push presses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all right. Shrugs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Squat hold to front press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hammer curls. One, two, three, four, five. Ooh, I feel like I'm slowing down on those hammer curls. All right. I got. 30 seconds of rest. Woo! Yeah. And then we're going into our last set, which is going to be our best set. All right. Ha! Huh. Grab some water really quick. Again, if you need more rest that's fine I just don't want you to go heavier with this and have it slow you down speed strength day is the only day that we go fast through these strength exercises okay so we're hitting the cardio we're hitting the the uh, strength aspect of this too all right I'm gonna go into my nine front squats here we go one two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Going into my push presses. One, two, three, four. Blast with those legs. Five, six, seven, ah, eight. All right. Going into my shrugs. Two, three, four, five, Six, seven, squat, hold your front press. Two, three, four, five, six, full extension. And then my hammer curls, hammer time guys. Two, three, four, five, yeah. All right, so we are gonna go into a Tabata finisher. We're gonna do some abs for this. I'm gonna keep one of my weights out and I'll show you what we're gonna be doing. So while you're resting, I'm gonna talk through this. So we're gonna do sit outs. All right, so my hands are gonna be in close to my knees. My knees are hovering off the ground. I'm gonna kick out. This back foot goes flat as my elbow comes to my knee. My chest is facing this way. My hand is in tight to my hip, or my hip isn't tight to my hand, switching it out the other way. So, when we're doing the Tabata finisher, we're gonna do 20 seconds of sit-outs. If you have any issues with sit-outs, like your wrists, or any problems like that, I'm gonna have you do dead bugs. Opposite arm, opposite leg. Opposite arm, opposite leg, fully extends to the ground as the other arm and leg are up in the air, all right? Now, if you just don't like sit-outs, do the sit-outs. If they actually physically hurt you, don't do them. Do the dead bugs, all right? And then we have our sprinter crunches. So for my sprinter crunch, I'm gonna be up on my shoulder blades and I'm gonna touch my opposite elbow to opposite knee as I fully extend the leg out. We're gonna do that for 20 seconds. And then we have our toe touches. So if you want to make this a little bit harder, you can, so 
Josh was doing a toe touch yesterday where his legs were straight at a 90 degree angles. I'm going to do our toe touch a little differently today where my thigh is at a 90 degree angle, but then my, my uh, calves and shins are going to be at a 45, a little bit extended away from my body. I'm going to reach up and down, reach up and down. Now, if you don't want to do that with the weight, you're just going to reach towards your shoelaces. Don't bring those knees in. Keep those legs extended out as you reach towards the shoelaces. All right, and then we have our TFW twist. So if you have a weight, fantastic. You wanna make this harder, have those feet off the ground. You wanna make it easier, touch those toes. But I want you to keep that back straight as you go just to the outside of your thigh as fast as possible, all right? So what we're gonna do for our Tabata is we're gonna do those four exercises two times through, okay? So 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest, and then we go on to the next exercise. All right, so I'm getting ready in my sit out position or my dead bug position, whichever one you choose. And we're starting in three, two, one, hit it. Making sure that you don't push out on that shoulder, stay in tight. This is a wrestling move. You're pretending like someone's on your back and you're trying to get them off. Pretend like Coach Josh is on your back. And you're trying to get them off. And switching it out. We're going to our sprinter crunch now. We got three seconds. And we're going. Oh, actually, that's my bicycle. Uh, let's just do the bicycle. Sorry, guys. <laughs> sprinter crunch is different. <laughs> That's okay. We're getting the work done. It's all good. Three, two, one. Ha ha. All right. Now I got my toe touches. I'm going to use my weight with this. My legs, right angle here, 45 there, reaching up and down. Get those shoulder blades off the ground, guys. Oh, reach towards those shoelaces. All right. Got about seven seconds left. Yeah. Going for it. All right. Now I have my TFW twist. Okay. Get that back straight when you're doing this. Keep that weight in close to your chest. You can also do this without weight. Side to side, side to side. You got this, you got this. Whoo! 20 seconds. It's a long time for these TFW twists. There's a lot of volume in here. Okay, guys, we got five seconds left. Three, two, one. Yeah. All right. Going back into my sit outs. Got one more set of each of these exercises. And we're going. Or you're doing your dead bugs. All right. I feel like it's been a little while since I've done my sit outs. I'm feeling it. All right, and bicycles. Switching it out to our bicycles. All right, woo, here we go. Really kick it out guys, kick it out. Five seconds left. Get those shoulder blades off the ground. You got this. Woo! Going in my toe touches. Again, I'm grabbing my weight. You don't have to. And hit it. Reaching up. Make sure to get those shoulder blades off the ground. Extend those feet out so you're not pulling your knees into your chest. Three seconds. All right, going into my TFW twist. Aha, last set. It's our best set. And we're going. Woo! Just to the outside of the thighs. It's not a huge range of motion, just about 30 degrees off to each side. 
All right, guys, you got about seven seconds left. You got this, you got this. Boom, boom, keep that back straight, keep that back straight. Whew. And you are done with the Tabata finisher. Yeah. Now, haha, we're gonna go into our homework. Yay. Otherwise known as dessert or a warrior snack. Because if you don't feel like doing the workout, you could always just do the, 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 the uh, homework, guys. And then that'll just get your body moving, blood pumping. Sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes if you're just super exhausted or super anxious, maybe just do the homework or just do the mobility, all right? So I have my Cossack lunge. I want to come out wide with this. I want this toe to point up to the ceiling and I'm trying to get my thigh close to my calf. So I come back in, step out wide, step out long. Doing 10 on each side. This is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Now, I like to do my four point hip mobility next because I like to get it out of the way. <laughs> All right. So I have my four point hip mobility. I'm gonna be in my quadruped position, getting those knees off the ground. My butt stays down as my knee swings out. Touch opposite hand to opposite foot 10 times. It's three, four, five, six, seven, slow and stable. Eight. Nine and 10. Woo, so I kind of fall over. All right, now we have our archer planks. Widening out those feet, dragging that arm along that chest, following that hand with your eyes, coming back down, going to the other side. Get this nice stretch with this, guys. Keep those shoulders over those wrists. This is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you got this. Nine, ten. Woo! I really like those archer planks. Guys, you did it! You win! Um, as far as the story of the day is concerned, there's this quote by Lincoln, which when I looked it up, there were like four different variations on it. So who knows if he actually said it, but it's kind of an interesting quote. So it's, uh, Give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the ax, all right? And that kind of has to do with what I was talking about today with getting that work situation fixed up so that you're not spending a lot of time getting distracted, right? You don't want to keep hammering at that tree with a dull ax. It's the same thing with meal prep in the kitchen, you know? If your kitchen's chaotic, it's gonna be really hard to enjoy doing meal prep if you're constantly searching for stuff or you're tripping over stuff or whatever. It's just taking that extra little time to get our situation set up so that it's viable for us to do our best work. Same thing with our living rooms. If we need to move our couch back six inches while we're doing these workouts just so we get more room, move it, move it back. It's okay, that's part of the workout, you know? But here at Training for Warriors, we're here to help you be a little bit better every day. 
and you're doing it. So thank you. Meow, meow, meow. <laughs> oh, I love these insights into people's lives. It's so good. Anyway.